Welcome to another Angle Nook switching puzzle in ON30. Today's puzzle is going to be a condensed version using just five cars instead of the original puzzle's eight cars. And we're going to be doing it on my rotating section plate staging yard fiddle yard for the Clear Creek Canyon ON30 layout. In front of you, you can see I have five coin medallions numbered one through five for the cars in the puzzle. What I've done is I've chosen to uh, have my train, after we're done with switching and returning to town, have car number one next to the locomotive, car number five next to the caboose, and we will leave cars two, four, and three here in town. Now, the Ingle Nook switching puzzle in the condensed version allows us to have a siding with a two-car capacity, another siding with a two-car capacity, a track with a five-car capacity, and a switching lead with a capacity of one locomotive and two cars. So although I don't have any boundaries set up on the sector plate fiddle yard today, those are the rules I'm going to observe. So let's start out by having our train arrive in town. Now you might imagine the crew would now position the caboose at the end of the siding so that it's accessible at the end of their switching so they can return to town. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my sector plate. And that puts the caboose at the end of the consist on the main line. The sector plate is indexed by brass rod going through brass tube, and it's just this simple. Those brass rod carry the power to the tracks. So as I look at my puzzle, the first thing I want to do is I want to look at where the cars are. Car number one is here at the end of the siding. I think I'm going to save that move till last. I know that I need to get rid of car number two, and since this kept passing siding uh, up here, the switching lead, can only hold two cars. I'm going to start by just moving car number two. So I'll call my brakeman out. Let's have him uncouple the cars. And now we'll move forward. At this point I stop the train and just as, throw, as though I was throwing a turnout lead I'll rotate my sector plate onto the siding track. Reconnect the power. Remove the block to keep cars from falling off the end. And again, we'll back that car down on the siding. Remember, this siding has a capacity of only two cars. So that siding is now at capacity. We'll leave this car here, and we'll go back out on the switching lead. So the next thing I see, I want car number five next to the caboose, <clears throat> and it is at the back of this siding. So let's do some work to get that free. Rotating over to that siding, removing the bumper stop, Reconnecting the power. I'm now going to get car number three out of the way. We'll come back out. We'll put car number three on the main line.
we'll leave card number three here. We'll now go back out and get onto the siding and pick up car number five. So we've gotten it out from behind the other cars. It's now in a position where we can put it in our consist as we head for back to the point of origin on our railroad. We'll come back and get car number five. It's a little messy here because we only have a two car capacity on the switch lead and I don't really have anywhere to put car five for the moment. So I think we're going to have to do cars three and four on the siding one at a time. As you watch me do the puzzle, you may notice that there's probably an easier way to do it. Fewer moves. That's the fun of the single loop switching puzzle. We all get our chance to be the conductor. Going forward, we'll keep car number five. Let's go get four, car number four off of the caboose. And car number four is going to stay here in town. The rules of the angle nook puzzle are such that you can leave the car anywhere you like. Since these sidings have two car capacities, the only place I can leave car number four is on the far siding. So that's where we're going to leave it. Again, just as though I was running a, a turnout on a model railroad, I aligned myself for the siding. Oh, goodness. Now, car number five is in a position where we can put it in front of the caboose according to the randomly generated coin medallion switch list. So let's go ahead and put car number five next to the caboose. Now let's go get car number one. And you can see that car number one is behind car number two. So unfortunately, we're going to have to spend some company resources on coal and water to move car number two around. So let's put car number one on the main line in front of car number five where we need it blocked for the next portion of our journey. Car number two needs to stay here. So let's go ahead and Put that back on a siding. And again, the angle nook puzzle says that the sidings only have a two car capacity in this condensed version. 
So I have to put it back out here on the near siding. So now, with the car order as we need it to depart town, we back our locomotive down onto our train. Our brakeman will hook up the air brake lines, we'll pump up the reservoirs, we'll do a brake check, confirm with our conductor that it's time for us to leave town, and we're on our way. Thank you for joining me today for Inglenook switching puzzle in O N30 using a sector plate fiddle yard.